Hi, I'm Samantha Johnson and on this edition of Beyond the Game, we're taking a look at the future of Manchester United. With manager Louis van Gaal set to exit, will the special one, Jose Mourinho, return to the fold in the English Premier League or will he be overlooked for one of the biggest jobs in world sports? So Van Hal is on his way to being sacked as the United manager. The Red Devils won the FA Cup on Saturday, but rumours had been building before the final that Mourinho was in line to take over at Old Trafford. It would bring to a close two years of pain just for about everyone else involved. Peter Franks has more. You'd think that winning one of the world's premier footballing trophies would be a time of celebration. But for Louis Van Gaal, the vultures were circling once again. I don't uh, want to talk about leaving the club. And it was three years ago that uh, United had the title. And I'm very proud that I am the first manager after the period of uh, Alec Ferguson, Sir Alec F Ferguson. And uh, I have made the picture with him because that's history. To bring United's greatest ever manager into the conversation is a dangerous game, but Van Gaal was always realistic. And in this crazy world, football world, it can happen every day. Also with me, that I have said. When it is happening Jose Mourinho, then it can happen also with me. And recently, LVG's team had gone from one low point to another crashing out of the Champions and Europa Leagues, whilst also struggling in the Premiership. At the moment, uh, I cannot defend myself because we are out of the champion, uh, of, uh, Champions League. His relationship with the players, fans and press was always strained, and there was speculation about sacking over the past year. For irony of ironies, it's after lifting a trophy that Van Gaal will have to walk away. I uh, show you the cup and I don't discuss it with my friends of the media who already second me for six months. Which manager can do that? What I have done. Jose Mourinho perhaps, as it's likely the Portuguese will take on the poison chalice and try and lift United back to where they feel they belong. Well, now we can take you to Man United's training ground where Louis van Gaal has just left. These are the very latest pictures of van Gaal's car leaving Carrington after probably a very, very long day of negotiations. So the big questions are, uh, will that be the last time the Dutchman drives out of the ground or will we wait for tomorrow? Well, for that answer, uh, we can join TRT World Sports correspondent Sarah Morris, who is outside Old Trafford. Now, Sarah, we've just seen Van Hal leave the training ground. What is the latest? Well, I think you might be right. He may have left that training ground for the last time and that big fat Mercedes that he was in possibly will be someone else's car tomorrow. Certainly the severance talks he's been involved in uh, at the training ground all day today look like they have wrapped up or certainly wrapped up for today. Of course, money was what was being discussed there today. We understand he's paid around $9 million a year, but he is only two years into that three-year contract. Uh, so he'll be pushing very hard and he's certainly someone who doesn't like to give up. So he'll be pushing extremely hard to make sure he really gets his full payout for that year that he will no longer be there. Oh, we know that he is very much a character, <laughs> very strong character in that. Uh, why is there a delay in making this annou announcement? Well, it's certainly been criticised, that delay, and I think the club was trying to avoid any more controversy. They had a nightmare last time uh, when they were getting rid of the former um, manager, of course, uh, and, and it was leaked to the media before he found out, uh, and they were very much criticised for that, the club. Now, they wanted to avoid it this time with Van Gaal, but it looks like they didn't do too well at that. So our understanding is uh, that uh, he, Van Gaal, was celebrating uh, the FA Cup win on the weekend, uh, and it was his wife who found out that he was to be sacked 
via the media. Uh, so that didn't go down particularly well. And of course, today negotiations have been going on and all the leaks have been carrying on and carrying on. So the club probably hasn't handled this particularly well and certainly not as well as they should have considering the lessons they should have learnt from last time. Well, what's the latest on the backroom stuff as well? I mean, it's not just Van Hal that's going as well. No. I, can, I can imagine the reason why it has gone on for so long is because you've got to think about the other people involved as well. Yeah, and I think if you look at our, at who's going to replace him there, of course, uh, Jose Mourinho, he is a bit of a PR man himself, and certainly so is his manager, uh, Jorge Mendes, who manages uh, Ronaldo, uh, Cristiano, rather. And, uh, and so certainly they know how to play the journalists, they know how to get them into a lather, and that's certainly something they've been doing over the last couple of days. Uh, we understand that uh, uh, Mourinho's manager will turn up here tomorrow uh, to discuss uh, further deals with the club and perhaps we'll find out more there. But, you know, he's been very clever today. He's been at home uh, in his house in London, but he's been in and out several times. He's taken the dog for a walk. He's ordered takeaway. So he's certainly made sure he's been in the headlines today. OK, thanks very much, Sarah. Pleasure. With seven league titles in three countries and one Champions League title to his name, the confident and colourful Van Hal had the gravitas to lead United. It seemed like the perfect fit. So, where did it all go wrong? Well, for that, we've got Lance Santos. Well, Samantha, a better question to ask is where did it ever really go right for Mr. Van Hull? The Dutchman came in and spent a whopping 362 million. Only Manchester City spent more this season. And while well, Man City have got Champions League, Man United haven't. On the pitch, things didn't get any better. Van Hull's team scored 49 Premier League goals. That's just five more than Newcastle, who got relegated down at the bottom there. And where are you going, Van Hal? The Red Devils made a staggering 3,222 backwards passes, more than any other team in the English Premier League. His tenure at Manchester United won't be remembered fondly. Apart from being socially awkward... Louis van Gaal and his non-existent Red Army will be remembered for all the wrong reasons. The Dutchman was appointed in July 2014 as manager after leading Netherlands to a third-place finish at the World Cup. In August, Louis went on to lose his opening game of the season to Swansea and then didn't bother to win again all month. Staying in August and Manchester United were hammered by a League One side. A month later, and with not many wins in the bank, the famous Manchester United are held to a humiliating draw with Cambridge in the FA Cup. In October, Van Gaal's side are knocked out of the League Cup by championship team Middlesbrough. Two months later, United lose to Wolfsburg in the Champions League and are relegated to the Europa League. The same month, Van Gaal's team lose to Norwich at home. This means six games without a win for the first time since 1989. In March, Liverpool knock Manchester United out of Europe. Their Champions League hopes now hinge on a top four finish. But United blow that chance to go fourth and qualify for the Champions League after losing to West Ham. Manchester United end the season with a win, but Van Gaal is booed by some fans during his end of season speech. Louis Van Gaal is understood to have been fired as manager. Oh, I'm such a lucky girl. I'm now joined by two guys who know all there is to know about Man United. They're football journalist Warren Horton and David O'Brien, who are live from London. Guys, let's talk about this whole saga and break it down. Warren, I'll start with you. Here you have one of the world's biggest clubs with possibly the most amateur PR approach in handling this affair. Why is it dragging? Well... We, we were under the impression that this was going to be announced at the New York Stock Exchange at around 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock UK time. That hasn't happened. What seems to be happening is we know that um, we've been told by various sources in and around Manchester that they are actually de dealing with um, Louis van Gaal's severance pay. As you mentioned in your report earlier as well, he has a whole, uh, whole raft of staff who will be departing, apparently as well, some of the staff... Um, speaking to me via a third party, don't quite understand the gravity of what's going on with them in the club. As far as they're, they're concerned, progress is being made while they're at Manchester United. So there's the staff to deal with as well. And it's, this has all been about the narrative. This has all been about 
who comes out of this looking the least worst? Is it Louis van Gaal or is it Manchester United? This has all been going on from about January, February, when they decided to actually look, speak to Mourinho on the basis that Pep Guardiola, Guardiola was going to go to Manchester City. That was a big game changer as far as Manchester United were concerned. They couldn't get Guardiola. Guardiola was going, going to their noisy neighbours in the blue half of Manchester and they needed somebody with some real stature, with some real, with some real glitter and appeal to take on Guardiola. Because if you're not going to be the best team in Manchester, Manchester United certainly were never ever going to be back to where they belong, being the best Premier League, Premier League team. So, uh, David, it sounds like United really wanted Guardiola, but they're getting the, the bridesmaid in Jose Mourinho. What are your thoughts? I think, you know, Mourinho is a, is a great signing addition to Manchester United's backroom staff. He's a manager that will really bring the, the club out of the days of Sir Alex Ferguson. He'll become the personality and he'll really bring an aggressive style of football to Manchester United. United have been pretty decent against the top sides, but they haven't blown away the smaller teams. And that's what Mourinho will do. You look at his work with Cristiano Ronaldo, you look at his work with Eden Hazard, and it's just, it'll move this team on. Criticism, Louis van Gaal, you know, not scoring enough goals. Um, United averaged 74 goals in the Premier League era per season. Obviously, the 49 goals they've scored this season is quite frankly not good enough. But Louis van Gaal did a few good things, only conceding 35 Premier League goals, a pretty decent return, only nine at home. And the work with David De Gea, you know, there's a lot of positives that you can come from. You know, the young players that have come through, Anthony Martial, has been directly involved in 25 goals in all competitions for United this season. So it may all not be lost for Louis van Gaal, again, lifting the, lifting the FA Cup trophy. So it's not been the worst display in the world, but I think Mourinho will come in and will be the perfect man to lead United in the next sort of three, four, five years. Yeah, but how is he going to mould the side? Is it going to be an exciting attacking style of football is it just going to revert to type and be you know parking the bus i think the big thing with Mourinho is that he parks the bus in the bigger games and that's where the media get this sort of thought that Mourinho does that in uh, you know whichever sort of league he's been in or so forth but if you go back to his real madrid team uh, the 2011-12 la liga champions his team scored 121 goals that's the record for real madrid of all time so he can score goals, and the way that Mourinho does it is he, he doesn't have a philosophy, he doesn't have a, a set system, but he, he looks around the league and he looks at, he identifies the weaknesses. You know, when he first came over to the Premier League as Chelsea manager, everyone was playing a 4-4-2. Mourinho came in, he played a 4-5-1, he had more numbers in the centre of the park, and he dominated the league. Mourinho just needs to have this next tactical innovation, and he'll be absolutely fine with players like, you know, again, Anthony Martial, I mentioned him, and Zlatan Ibrahimovic heavily linked. Players like Rashford, Fusu Mensah, there's a lot of excitement and buzz around this Manchester United team. It's just get the right manager in, Mourinho, Mourinho probably is the right guy, and, and let them play football, let them attack, because United's transition this season, you know, the backward pass stat that you guys had that came up before. Well, hold on a sec, sorry, let me just bring it's, Warren it's... in for a second. Is Mourinho really the right man to be at United? Well, what other choices are there? That There was all this talk about perhaps Ryan Giggs being promoted from being one of the assistant managers to being the first team coach. That's the same route Pep Guardiola went down as well. But I think Manchester United, after what's happened with David Moyes, after what's happened with Louis van Gaal, they are looking for someone who can be as safer or as sure a bet as they possibly can to get them back to where they believe they belong and get back to winning trophies. And if you look around the, around the, around the world, if you look at managers available, Jose Mourinho does fit the bill in terms of them bringing them success. And I would have to agree with, with the other contributor as well. I think, I think there is a misconception that Jose Mourinho's teams don't play good football. You look at that early Chelsea side as well when he first came over. They had, they had Duff, they had Robin, they had Joe Cole, they had Drogba. All these exciting players being supplemented by the likes of Frank Lampard in midfield as well. So if he's got the tools there, if he can bring in the right players with his with these boss, with his agent, Jorge Mendes, United should, with the base that they have, have a very attacking, forward-thinking and positive side. OK, and guys, thank you very much. Well, there you have it. Louis van Gaal is on his way to becoming the second manager in three seasons to get the boot at Old Trafford. And his final words to the fans were essentially a tale of unrequited love. In behalf of my players, of my staff, of myself, I want to thank you.
for the unconditional support of you. Wherever we have played, however the things have gone on the field, you never let us down. Thank you for that. Thank you.